Hey data professionals, welcome back to my channel. Today is gonna be my first ever book review video called It's All Analytics by Scott Brook and Gary D. Miner. Both are PhD and both have been working in the academic and the business world for over 25 years. A lot of experience to share there. My first impression about the book? Well, this book to me, it's a one-stop shop for all things related to analytics. It's a very comprehensive guide, very high level, and it covers a lot of grounds, which is something that I haven't seen in any other book. The other thing is it demystify jargons. A lot of jargons in this analytics world, so things like data mining, machine learning, AI, descriptive analytics, there's so many jargons out there, and I think this book tries to its best to address all these jargons and what they are. Thirdly, this book is not technical, uh, which is great, and it's not a how-to academic book. It aims to teach uh, the language of data, and it's definitely for everyone at all levels, whether you're a CEO or whether you're a, a data analyst joining the business. The first lesson I took from the book is what is analytics? And the book suggests that analytics is an umbrella term, one global term that captures all methods and application of analytics itself. And what that means is things like business intelligence, statistics, data engineering, data modeling, data science, machine learning, or even AI, and all other terms that I haven't even mentioned here it's basically all can be combined as analytics and that's what the author suggests and I kind of like that the second lesson from the book is the four happen by Gartner in case you don't know Gartner is an IT consulting firm giving research and inside services Gartner classifies analytics into four areas descriptive analytics what happened in the past diagnostic analytics why did it happen in the past, predictive analytics, what will happen in the future, and prescriptive analytics, how to make it happen again. Now the key difference between predictive and prescriptive analytics is causation, so the cause, the cause and effect. In predictive analytics, you may or may not know the cause, it's not clear there, whereas prescriptive analytics, you know exactly what caused the prediction to happen that way. In that way, you can repeat the outcome uh, from what you've predicted. So that's why you can prescribe something. And in terms of processing, descriptive and diagnostic analytics are more manual. They're more in human involved, whereas predictive and prescriptive analytics are more automated. So it's more machine driven. The third lesson from the book, which I really like, is the detailed definition of many analytics jargon in the market. Let's start with BI or business intelligence. Well, business intelligence is essentially processes and tools to analyze data and turn them into insights to make better decisions and generally comes under the realm of descriptive analytics, just trying to understand what happened in the past. Machine learning. So machine learning is essentially the process of teaching machines by feeding them data to learn and produce a new insight or useful information. Artificial intelligence. Now artificial intelligence can be uh, an extension of machine learning, but the difference is artificial intelligence or AI is focusing on mimicking the human brain and, and the machine is learn to think like a human and some illustrations of this would be neural network or deep learning data science data science based on the book is an accumulation of many different knowledge out there like all the three ones above bi machine learning ai and even statistics and also crossover with the domain or the business domain specifics like even marketing or healthcare. So data science is essentially an accumulation of all that. And lastly, statistics. Well, statistics is essentially characteristics of samples and samples are a subset of population. I think the book go into 
in depth what these are and I really like that because I think this is basically a one-stop shop like I said earlier is everything is in one place in this book my fourth lesson is very related to the previous one which is how all these jargons relate to each other or crisscross I start with statistics which is generally common and used by other applications out there and what I meant by that is statistics is generally uh, one activity within business intelligence program and machine learning for example is an extension of business intelligence because business intelligence usually look at what happened in the past or descriptive whereas machine learning is more of a future so predictive or prescriptive uh, analytics there now AI again uh, similar with machine uh, but based on what I've understood from the book AI is also an extension uh, to machine learning or business intelligence and also using statistics and lastly data science kind of come as an accumulation of all all this now this is my next lesson lesson number five but this may come as a common knowledge out there which is the data explosion uh, based on a study by IDC or International Data Corporation in 2017, they predict that the global volume of data will grow to 175 zettabytes by 2025 in three years time. Just so you know, zettabyte is basically 1 billion petabytes. Now, to illustrate this, if you are downloading this 175 zettabytes at a normal internet download rates let's say 25 megabytes per second it will take you about 1.8 billion years to download all of it now if everyone in the planet today join and to download all this it will stick take it will still take 81 days to download all of it so huge amount of data now what that means is with all this data coming in there will be a lot of challenges on how we can source, how we transform, how we clean, how we report, how we serve this data into insights to many different people. And as, the, as a data professional, these, preserve, these serve us tremendous uh, opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of values that you can unlock from data. And from, for a data professional like me or like all of you, this means uh, we will never run out of jobs really, <laughs> which is a good thing. The next lesson, or lesson number six, is about justifying analytics program. Now, analytics program is a project or projects that the business deliver or looking to deliver and use analytics to solve some problems they are having. Now, to justify an analytics program, they generally come into two reasons. Uh, first one is there's a critical business event and this is something that is short-term or reactive, something happened to the business. This could mean a significant drop in customer loyalty or attention. And there's a new regulation comes up or merger and acquisition uh, happen between businesses. The other one is more of a winning strategy as a, using analytics as a, in the long run. And this is more strategic long-term and for example, this could mean trying to gain more customers or gaining scale to meet the market demands, reducing costs in the long run, improve productivity across the business and maybe automating inefficiencies. Lesson number seven, when it comes to delivering a successful analytics program, the focus should be on people and processes, not technology. The book suggests that what may cause the program to fail are due to a number of reasons. Reason number one is not be able to adapt quickly enough. So this can come in the form of let's say the leaders in the business think their way of doing way of doing business now is good enough. So why fix that's not broken? So they don't look at the long term, so they want they don't really want to adapt. The second one is isolation or miss alignment this is again actually the opposite so for example the leaders are bought with the new cool technology maybe some consultants sell this but they're not involving the 
the actual business users or the end users that are actually going to use the tool. So people uh, on the business side, on the end user side, see this as just extra work. So they not bought in, they don't want to get involved. Third is education gap. So again, if something new is being implemented, but uh, training and knowledge transfer is not considered heavily to make sure the business who adopt this are able to use the new technology solution, then it's going to fail. Lastly is lack of incentives. So if you are an employee in a business who are working, making money, but then you don't really see an incentive to adopt analytics or to you to basically work more intelligently using more data, uh, being more data driven, then why bother? There's no incentive there. So the leaders uh, in the business do need to make sure they actually apply metrics uh, so that people actually are uh, incentivized to work more intelligently with analytics. My last lesson from the book is called the Gartner Hype Cycle. Again, the book reference from Gartner, the IT consulting firm on this. And the, the Hype Cycle is about how technology evolve over time from its beginning. It starts with technology trigger, peak of inflated expectations, trough of disillusionment, slope of enlightenment, and lastly, plateau of productivity. The trigger at the beginning is when a new tech comes up in the market, it's very cool and sexy, and people are starting to get excited. The peak of inflated expectations is when uh, there's a lot of publicity that, uh, of success stories, often accompanied by also scores of failures. Some companies take action and some companies do not. And, and this is then followed by trough of delusion, disillusionment, where public interest wanes as more failures uh, occur investment continue to decline and well businesses are only buying if they know that the products are going to be supported in the long run slope of enlightenment now this is where there's more instances of tech uh, more more benefits uh, crystallized to the business there's more investment made as well and Companies that are conservative, they still remain cautious, but they start to look at how we adopt this. And lastly, plateau productivity, this is where mainstream adoption happens. To close this video summary, I learned a lot. From this book. And what I learned was what is analytics, the four happens by Gartner, detailed definitions of many analytics terms and how they fit together, inevitable data explosions, justifying analytics program, people process focus, not technology, and lastly, Gartner hype cycle. If you enjoyed this video so far, leave thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. Until then, thanks for so much for hanging around and I'll see you in the next video.